Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Cottage Kitchen at the Elliott Homestead. I may have bitten off more than I can chew with this video, but it's really important for me to show you that you can eat whole foods from scratch, made at home in your kitchen, in less time than it takes you to go get takeout. We just started homeschooling a few weeks ago, so we're back to a busy schedule, which means that I need to have a lot of weeknight meals accounted for, meals that I can prepare quickly. There's not the budget for eating out all the time, nor is there time for us to be spending so much time in the kitchen when we have a full school day ahead of us. So I came up with three weeknight meals that I think you're gonna love. Before we dive into it, make sure you hit the subscribe button below this video. A ton of you watch these videos and aren't subscribed to the channel. So take a second to do that. Take a second to turn those notifications on and that way you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Also, before we get started, make sure you're subscribed to our free newsletter. There's a link to that below the video. All the recipes that I'm gonna be making with you today are going to be sent out in printable PDF format. So if you wanna get the full recipes, subscribe to that newsletter. All right, we got three recipes to cook through today. Here is what I would make for dinner if I had 20 minutes. Here's what I do make for dinner because I have 20 minutes. All right, the first weeknight meal that I'm gonna be sharing with you is my homemade Philly cheesesteak. Before we dive into the recipes, I would like to thank Porter Road for sponsoring today's video. This is meat I use, meat I order, and meat I love. Y'all know me, you know how much I love and value good meat. Where I live, it can be tricky to find particular cuts that either we don't raise ourselves or we want more of. That's originally how I found Porter Road. Sadly, my local butcher doesn't offer meat that meets my standards, so instead, I order from Porter Road, which is an online butcher shop that delivers high-quality meat right to your door. Porter Road works with trusted local farmers who are raising animals the right way, humanely, on pasture, no added hormones, no antibiotics. You can shop a large selection of dry-aged beef, pork, and chicken, including rare butcher cuts. I love that Porter Road showcases rare cuts that deserve to be appreciated and served on our tables. Every single thing I've eaten from Porter Road, and I have eaten a lot, has been absolutely delicious. Visit porterroad.com forward slash the Elliott Homestead to get 15% off your first order. The first recipe that we're gonna make together is a homemade Philly cheesesteak. There's a lot of adaptations you can make with this recipe, which makes it really great for what you have in your refrigerator and in your pantry. I'm gonna be using a bavette steak to make my Philly cheesesteak. This kind of comes from the underbelly of a steer and it's a delicious cut, lots of ways you can use it, and it cooks up really quickly. I'm gonna actually be using this bavette steak in all the recipes today, but just know there's a lot of adaptations that you can make to use what meat you have on hand. You'll just wanna use something that cooks fairly quickly and has some structure to it. This is perfect for that. So the seasoning is really simple. This is an all-purpose all seasoning that my mom makes, but really typical to something like Johnny's or Lowry. And we'll give it a good bit of seasoning. This has things like celery and garlic and onion powder, salt and pepper and paprika. So you could certainly make your own. All right, I'm gonna get my skillet going. One skillet for the onions and peppers and meat and one for my hoagie roll. But me being me, I don't actually have any hoagie rolls. I have these beautiful ciabatta um, that we made together over here on the channel last year and I still use them all the time and I still love them. So the idea is to put the meat and the peppers and the onions, saute it all up, get it really delicious and put it in between two pieces of bread. So use what you've got. Cut it in half because I'm going to want to toast it. All right, next up is our onions and peppers. I have to remind myself, I'm not racing myself, but I'm feeling kind of excited to get this done because also I just so happen to be really hungry right now. So this is gonna taste so good when it's all done. Okay, we're gonna do thin slices of onion. I love to do it half like this because you can lay it flat on the cutting board and then it doesn't roll around on you. Okay, 
onions, good. Peppers, we're gonna do those next. So if I had a little bit more time to make this meal, then I would flesh out these homemade Philly cheesesteaks with a nice coleslaw or a potato salad, good bag of potato chips, something of the sort. But on a super busy night, we might just eat it just like this, no additives, no frills. All right, peppers get the same treatment, thin slices. All right, we're actually gonna do the peppers and onions first. So, a little bit of olive oil is gonna go into my pan. It's nice and hot, you can see it. In they go. Ah! All right. While my peppers and onions are going, that's probably gonna take about 10 minutes, which is gonna take up a good chunk of my 20 minutes that I have to make this. So in order to cook my meat a little faster, a really traditional way of doing a Philly cheesesteak is just to cut your meat into smaller pieces and then cook those small pieces. The benefits of this is the meat cooks really fast and you get all those gorgeous little charred brown bits on a lot of pieces of meat. Now, the only trick with bovet steak is to cut across the grain. This is true of other steaks as well, such as a skirt steak or a flank steak. So you can see the muscle fibers running up and down, which means I wanna cut it this way. That's gonna break those muscle fibers up and make my steak really tender and really easy to eat. Look at that fat in there. That is good stuff. Fun fact that you may not know about me is that I actually went to school for beef production. So my college classes were oftentimes spent in a meat freezer where we would look at carcasses and we would grade the ribeye area and the marbling and the back fat and you would learn to look at me in a, in a totally different way to say, this is gonna be good. Look at that, it all sliced up beautifully. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a massage. It's gonna help all that seasoning salt to work in there. Break up any huge pieces because remember we're gonna be eating this off a hoagie roll. So we want something that's bite size. I gotta stop saying hoagie roll, it's a ciabatta. Okay, that looks good to me. So my peppers and onions are gonna take a few more minutes. I'm gonna heat up my other skillet here with a little bit of olive oil and get my ciabatta toasted. Now the goal with the Philly cheesesteak is that it all kind of gets all gooey and soft and savory and delicious together. So my peppers and onions have had a little bit of a head start. And now I'm gonna throw my meat directly into that pan. And all the meat juices and liquids, it's gonna help those peppers and onions to soften. There's only one more ingredient left for our cheesesteaks, which is the cheese part. Now, this is traditionally made with provolone, but this recipe is all about adaptation. And I don't have provolone. Uh, I have some homemade mozzarella and I have some Gruyere. So if you're a diehard Philly cheesesteak fan, I apologize in advance for what's about to happen. But the idea is we've got kind of a mild, melty cheese. We're gonna mix some of this into our pepper and onion mixture and then put some more of it on. Now I'm 
actually gonna dice the cheese up to mix it in. Make little cubes. The goal here isn't to cook the meat into oblivion or to cook everything until it's a soup, but rather to cook it until it's just done. You can see it, it's brown, it's beautiful. So in goes our cheese. I'm gonna melt down, flavor our meat, flavor our peppers and onions, turn delicious. Most all of my cheese has melted. I just left a little bit behind to put on top to give me that beautiful cheese layer that's so traditional of a cheesesteak. Time to plate it up. Meal number one that you can make super fast, a homemade Philly cheesesteak. Look at this. Now remember, you can use all different types of meat, all different types of bread, all different types of cheese. I'm gonna put a few pickles on mine. I just can't resist. I think it's important to remember sometimes, even if it's just investing in a big piece of meat like a bavette steak, that there's so many ways you can use that economically in your kitchen to actually save you money. Look at that. So good. I'm gonna eat it. Stu's gonna eat it. I had to take a quick tea to devour that cheese stick. It was so good and we were so hungry, but we're on to meal number two, which is street tacos. I didn't eat street tacos until I was in high school, which is quite silly because they are all around me and they're so good here. And in the orchard where I worked, the taco truck would come through really early in the morning at like 7.30. But because we'd started work so early, we were starving by the time it came around and we would eat tongue tacos. This is the way that they serve them, this kind of street style format. The great news for you is it's a lot less chopping, a lot less prep and really easy to do for a weeknight. So I'm gonna go back to that bavette steak. This is a great meat to use for tacos because it has enough fat and enough texture to hold up. But remember, you could use almost any kind of beef. You could use lamb, you could use chicken, never ending. The idea is we're just gonna sear it really quickly, cook it through, get it nice and delicious, and season it well. My seasoning of choice for tacos, especially with a rich meat like beef, is tagine. This is chili and dehydrated lime and salt, and it's so good. It's sold in all the stores around where I live. Um, and I'm just gonna give it, look at it, it's just beautiful. A nice thick coating on the outside. This meat has been dry aged. It has so much flavor that we really don't need to do too much to it. We're just seasoning it, we're enhancing it. We're giving it a little salt, a little something. We're gonna cut this one the same way. Because we're using the same steak, we're gonna to need to make sure that we cut across the grain. But traditionally street, traditionally street tacos have the meat really finely chopped up after it's cooked so that it's really easy to eat on the street. All right, hot skillet. And in we go. This is just gonna take a few minutes per side. No, 
So I gave myself 20 minutes per meal to prepare these for you. My guess is that meat is probably gonna take about five minutes per side. I don't wanna cook it all the way through. I want it to be kind of medium rare on the inside. So that's what I'm going for. Uh, before we started filming, I realized I was out of corn tortillas. We have great local markets here where we can get fresh corn tortillas made, but they're also so delicious and easy to make yourself. But I went ahead and made those up, assuming that you probably weren't going to be making homemade corn tortillas on a weeknight. Again, easy to do, but probably not on a Tuesday after a full day. So there's our corn tortillas. If you're using store-bought corn tortillas, just warm them up for a little bit, either under your broiler or on a skillet on the stove because if they're cold, they'll break. They're no good. You need to heat them up a little bit. And after you do, keep them warm by just stacking the warm tortillas on a plate. Put a little tea towel or a little paper towel over the top and that'll help them to kind of steam, keep them soft and keep them warm until you're ready to plate them. Now, the cool thing about street tacos is that the toppings are so simple, really, really simple. They are all served the same way in my town. Um, let's see, which is with some sweet yellow onion. So we're gonna get a little dice of that. All roads lead back to onions one way or another. All right, a nice fine dice. I do that by starting at one end, going through one way, and then going back the other way. Okay, there's our onion, super simple. We're gonna do the same thing with cilantro. Now normally a street taco would never be served without a few fresh slices of radish, but I don't have any of those. If you do, shave them off nice and thin and just put a few on the top because the red looks really pretty and it gives you this nice kind of counter crunch during your taco, during while you're eating your taco during eating enjoyment of your taco. Uh, we just need two more things now. We need our salsa. I make salsa verde. That's what I love on my street tacos and hot sauce. Oh, and not to be forgotten, some lime for some fresh acid. Now again, if this was maybe a weeknight where I had a little bit more time, then I would probably serve my street tacos with some homemade refined beans, maybe some rice that's kind of has some good salsa mixed in something simple to kind of stretch it out a little bit further, but on a busy night, this is perfectly satisfying just as it is. Okay, steak done to the way I like it. If you're using a thinner piece, obviously it's gonna take a little bit less time, but even with this nice thick fat piece, uh, it didn't take over 20 minutes. So we're gonna cut across the grain, take care to cut across the grain. Oh, I can smell the lime. Set you aside. And I'm gonna dice the meat up into kind of small pieces. It's cooked beautifully, charred on the outside, medium rare on the inside, which is how I like mine. And by cutting it up into pieces, the bavette steak itself is just, it's so tender. I was saying to Stu while it was cooking, like this is, why don't we have this every day? Okay, here we go. Not overstuffed, just perfect. A perfect balance of fat, acid, smoke, spice. There is almost no meal that I could make for my kids that would make them happier than this. A little onion, a little cilantro on each taco. Of course, served with some fresh lime, a little bit of salsa. This is made with tomatillos, cilantro, jalapenos, onion. And 
there is an under 20 minute meal that you can make with all sorts of different vegetables, salsas, spices, and meat cuts. So good, so satisfying. So much so that I'm gonna eat it right now. It tastes perfect. Mmm. I was told once that to eat a taco well, you bow to the taco. You don't bring it to you. You go down to its level and you say thank you for your service, ma'am. Enjoy. Okay, last up. I keep having to stop partway through filming and just shove my face full of food because it's so good. I have one more piece of that bavette steak, so I'm going back to it. This time we're gonna make an entree salad, which is a great way to use up all different sorts of things that you may have in your fridge. Um, in this case, I'm gonna use that bavette steak again. I've got some romaine lettuce, some green onions, some tomatoes. We're gonna make it delicious and we're gonna make it fast. All right, I'm actually going to, the bavette steak is really nice and fatty, but I'm gonna add just a little bit of olive oil because I want my herb blends to stick. I have my Bona Fortuna spice blends. I'll put a link to them below the video. They're so good. I find myself going back to them over and over and over again because they're just pre-blended and simple and so yummy. So I'm gonna sprinkle this. You could sprinkle it with thyme, rosemary, Italian herb blends, Grand Marsala. You could use all kinds of different things. Chinese five spice. What kind of flavors do you want? Lots of versatility here. The idea is we're kind of gonna create a little bit of an herb crust on the outside. Same thing on the other side. I've got my skillet heating up again. Again, you could do this on a charcoal grill outside. You could do it on a big griddle over a fire. You could do it on your stove top. So a lot of options there. Okay, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's colorful and green and spicy. It made me sneeze. I'm using the Ayo Ioyo Ayo Ayo herb blend and the Cacio e Pepe herb blend. Okay, back into our hot skillet again. Again, this is probably gonna take about five minutes per side. All right, clean cutting board here because we're gonna be eating raw vegetables, clean knife. Got my romaine here that's been washed and I'm just going to give it a rough chop. I like to do this by cutting the end off. I cut some lengthwise strips where the leaves are really big up at the top. This makes short work of it. Okay, onto our salad platter. I'm gonna make a smaller version since it's just Stu and I eating this right now. So we'll set the rest of this aside. All right, now to my base salad here, I'm gonna add some scallions. They have so much flavor. And if I could only grow two things in my garden all the time, forever and ever, it would be scallions and parsley. Those are my two very favorite things for adding flavor. So a nice fine chop here. And I kind of have my knife at a diagonal because even though it's a week night, it can still look beautiful. So. I like to cut my scallions at a diagonal because they look pretty. Get those little sprinkle and reserve a few to go on top. It's always nice with a salad when you can see what's inside of it, what's buried underneath. Okay, now the very last of my cherry tomatoes. Sun-dried tomatoes would also be delicious here, but luckily, I still have these gorgeous little sun gold beauties coming out of the garden. So I'm gonna half these, sprinkle them over the top while my meat keeps cooking. All right, tomatoes are on. I'm just gonna do a little bit of pepper. I have it around, so we might as well. Again, we're just looking for a contrast of colors, contrast of textures. Weeknight entree salads in our home typically become, what do I have that pairs really well together? So for example, last night I made this chicken salad. I had a roasted chicken. So I made a nice bed of greens, put some chicken over the top, put apples and walnuts and all kinds of beautiful things that played really well together. These all play really well together. 
So of course, it's a weeknight. You might not have time to make your own dressing, but if you do, um, I would recommend this tahini dressing. It's so simple to make and so good. Remember, if you want the exact recipe, to sign up for the free newsletter below because these recipes will be in the newsletter and you can access the archive for all the recipes that we've shared over there. So this one is one part lemon juice to three parts olive oil, and then two tablespoons of tahini are added, salt and sugar to taste. So dead simple. If you're not familiar with tahini, it sounds fancy. It just means a sesame seed paste, that's all it is. So it kind of adds this like full body coating your mouth texture to it. And it just has a really, really simple and beautiful flavor. So that's what we're gonna use to dress our salad. Now, on a weeknight that maybe wasn't so pressed, I would roast some potatoes to go alongside this. I might make some big, nice pieces of homemade garlic bread to serve alongside, maybe even a pot of rice or something to kind of flesh it out. But again, as it stands just like this, full of nutrients, really good, really delicious, and really fast. All right, that steak is almost done. So for its last few minutes of cooking, I'm gonna add some whole, unroasted, unsalted cashews into the mix so they can toast lightly in the bottom of the pan. These are gonna give our salad some delicious crunch. We're almost finished with our third meal. Again, across the grain, some nice, beautiful slices. I'm gonna leave these ones whole that I can just lay them beautifully over the salad. Absolutely gorgeous. Just like so. And then we're gonna give these cashews a little bit of a chop. They're so soft and sweet and wonderful. Crunchy and toasted. Okay, time to plate it all up. Now, typically when I do a salad like this for my family, I have a big old platter and it's almost completely flat and I just spread the whole thing out and spread all the stuff all over and it's beautiful and we all just sit around and pick at it and enjoy it. These are gonna go right over the top like so. Hot, they're so hot. Little sprinkling of cashews. Find a little bit of our green onions over the top of that beef, so beautiful. And then we're gonna drizzle our dressing right over the top. So there you have it, three wonderful meals that will nourish you, that you can make from scratch in less than 20 minutes on a weeknight or whenever you need a meal in a rush. Remember, if you wanna to learn to cook more food from scratch, to check out our cooking community, we're gonna be highlighting weeknight meals next month, which is our five-year anniversary. So there's gonna be a lot more where this came from. If you'd like even more cooking inspiration, make sure you check out our fall workshop schedule, which is below the video as well. I hope these recipes are helpful to you in your own kitchen. Enjoy.